Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Woolly Thistle Shopcast. I think this might be 1.30. <laughs> if you're keeping track, uh, let me know if that's correct. Um, yeah, so welcome. It's been a couple of weeks since we last spoke and it's great to be back with you. We actually woke up to snow this morning, falling out of the sky and actually laying on the ground. Not happy. There were big, big blobs um, and it's been raining for days on end, so I think it just got colder and gave us a wee bit of snow. So I took the opportunity to wrap up very warm and um, I'll mention what this is in just a minute. But I do wanna tell you to uh, be sure to be on our email list so that you get our weekly emails so that you get all the inside deets on whatever is coming and going here at the shop. I do try to give newsletter subscribers the first news and sometimes they get advance notice of things. So it does pay to be on our email list. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram and we have a Facebook group and Ravelry, all as the Woolly Thistle. Two L's in Woolly, of course, because we spell it the British way. And yeah, my name is Corrine. I own the Woolly Thistle um, and it's my pleasure to do this for a living. Uh, I never thought that that would happen. It was just something for me to start doing when the kids went to school full time, um, when my son uh, got out of half day kindergarten. And ever since that, it's just grown and grown and grown and we are having a great year thanks to you for shopping with us. So we do appreciate our customers very much. And so this um, Shopcast is something that's fun for me to do and also um, hopefully fun for you to watch. And we, have, we do have a lot of people watching and we always have lots of comments. So the comments are always fun and chatty. So do check them out and leave us a comment and you'll be in the drawing for a prize. So we do have a prize winner from last time, which I'll just mention after I take this off. Because <laughs> even though it was snow on the ground this morning, it's still kind of warm. But let me tell you about what this is. Um, you'll, you'll have seen it before if you've watched before. It's a recent FO and I just love it. It's, um, it's called a hat but it's not a traditional hap shape but i think it does qualify as a hap um and this actually ties in with our prize winner because the prize picked from the comments in the last episode is molly welsh and she asked the question what is a hap so congratulations molly welsh you are a winner and i'll talk more about that in just a minute so a hap is a simple warm shawl um the word comes from scotland it's a scottish word um, and it's really, I think it was quite a utilitarian thing, although of course you can have wedding hats and things like that. But this is um, a design by Patricia uh, P4 Chen on Instagram, and I think Ravelry, that's her name, also known as Natography. And she has been just doing awesome, awesome things. So she designed a whole bunch of shawls in Rama Fennel Garn, um, and so I knitted mine in 4133 I think I'll need to check that but it's a lovely soft pink but it's on grey so it's not a baby pink it's got a little bit of depth and um, a little bit more grown up um, and it's got this lovely what I kept calling a cat paw but it's not it's actually um, a Norwegian rose or is it a is it the name Trondheim rose maybe but it's a Norwegian lace pattern and it's all on garter stitch a funner knit you could not want. Um, very simple, very lovely, easy enough lace, which has got to be for me. And then uh, where you're doing the shaping here, there's no lace, although it would be easy enough to fit, fit that in all the way down. One of the things I really loved about her pattern um, is she has you create this edging and it's stretchy. just really nice nice finish and this edge is also stretchy so there's no very tight edges it's lovely and it's long and it's big and it's going to be with me all winter long i am quite sure so i'm wearing that and then i'm also wearing uh this sweater that i knit i want to say back in 2015 or 2016 out of let Lopi and i wear it all through the fall and winter it's very warm but because it's sleeveless um it helps regulate my body temperature and i don't overheat 
Um, unfortunately, this light color is now out of stock or out of um, production. They discontinued it. But basically, um, as far as I can tell or remember, there's no waist shaping in it. It's just a straight up and down body. So it's very simple to knit in the round. And um, and the shape and the um, the color work is lovely and easy. And I think it is knitted bottom up. And so you're decreasing throughout the yoke until you get to the neckband. So that's just lovely and very wearable. I'd like to make another one. Um, you can use high contrast colors or you could make it more all grays or you could make it just more subtle with a different uh, color in the body. The pattern is free. It's called uh, For Morgan Let Lopa Vesta and it's for Let Lopi and it's designed by Vedis John's daughter, which I know I'm butchering and uh, free pattern on Ravelry. If you want a link to it, we'll put a link in the show notes, but you can also go to NHK Claire on Ravelry, look at my uh, projects, and in 2016, 2015, somewhere in there, you'll find it, uh, and then you'll have the pattern from there too. I love this. I really do enjoy a vest, I've got to say. And also, when you're knitting a vest, you're knitting a garment, but it's much quicker because there are no sleeves to deal with. And these have lovely wee caps, which I like. Ding, ding. So I hope that uh, some of you will want to knit this. Of course, we stock Let Lopi as well, and we have all the colors. They're already running low on grays. Uh, so we are trying to stay ahead of demand, um, and we're hopefully getting more of them in soon, but it is getting more difficult because they are selling out. Right, so let's keep moving on. So Molly Welsh is our winner and she wins a $25 gift certificate this time, which is great. Thank you so much, Molly. Just send us an email at info at the Woolly Thistle. Put in the subject line winner all in capitals so that you pop out and we get that off to you as soon as possible. And happy, happy times shopping at the Woolly Thistle with it. Um, to be entered for this episode, just leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe and you will be in the offing to win a prize. Probably a $25 gift certificate or maybe a surprise prize, I'm not sure. But that's the fun of it. All right, so I have no FOs to show you this time, so we'll just move right along to my current whips. Um, and I wondered whether I should show you this one because she's not finished. <laughs> but look who's here. She's not finished. There's her petticoat under there. <laughs> she has no eyes yet. And her comb is not as um, rounded as I would like. She's more like a punk uh, rocker chick. <laughs> but she's lovely, is she not? Yes, she is. Her body took no time at all to knit. It's on DK. I knitted mine with strict garn from Rama, uh, two colors. And then I had some leftover strip garn for the, well, the beak is the main uh, contrast color. And then I had some of this leftover from mittens or something I'd been knitting. Oh no, Jay's socks. I knit him socks out of this for his red socks back when we used to go out to games and things. And isn't she lovely? She's getting personality already. But um, so knitting her body was very quick. Knitting these and sewing them on took as long as it took me to knit the whole body. <laughs> Because I don't, I don't have a lot of skill at that, and I'm not too too happy, really. But I like how her comb leans over. I think that's quite realistic. We have a chicken um, whose comb would go right over, and so I need to put wee eyes on her, and then I need to fill her with uh, a bag of beans down here. She needs more stuffing as well. I've been raiding the kids' uh, felt wool because they don't use it anymore. So I've been raiding different things um, that I could find. I even have some, this is a blast from the past. Look at, this is uh, Jacob that I bought this fleece, the one and only time I went down to the New England Fiber Festival, the one at the Big E in Massachusetts. Um, years ago, I took my kids to that. My son was quite young and as yet, um, <laughs> not well trained in being in the public. <laughs> and so we were at an indoor event there and um, I did buy a fleece. I bought this Jacob fleece 
but oh my god he touched everything you know like little jewelries and stitch markers and I couldn't keep his hands off his stuff so I had to eventually leave early which was very disappointing and but he was so bored <laughs> but I bought this Jacob fleece and I brought it home and I separated out the white from the browns and the blacks because a uh, Jacob fleece is a multicolor, and I washed it all and then I I have cards you know and I made lots of these sort of things I think they're called wee nests anyway I did this years and years and years ago and you know they sat by the spinning wheel by Morag ready to be spun and I've never spun it so I think it's time that they just get put into good use somewhere else and I think um my wee chicken here I don't know what her name's going to be but I think she is the shop mascot so I'm very happy with her and hopefully next time I'll bring her along and she'll actually be finished the pattern is by Ella someone is it Ella Austin I'll link to it in the show notes and please uh, knit yourself one as well great for using up scraps and a really nice nice wee project I love the color work on it so what other whips am I knitting right now well we have our sweater cal happening we're as you time of recording this I think we're three weeks in so we're probably going to be around the halfway mark when I when I actually have this go out uh, on the YouTubes and I am knitting Gudrun Johnson's uh, latest design called the Porty Pullover and I told you I was going to be knitting this and guess what I'm actually doing what I said I was going to <laughs> that doesn't happen that often does it this uh, project bag is from Madder Root Main on Instagram. Love her stuff. And she has a new design out that has a zipper. I think it's um, a notions pouch, but it looks quite big. Really nice, whoops. Okay, so that's living in there. So these are the colors of yarn that I'm using. I really wanted to use this one. And to me, on its own, this looked like a pink, although next to that, this is definitely pink. This is more a lavender or lilac, pinky purple. But I didn't know that until I got going. And I love pink and green together. I also love purple, as you can see. And so these were the colors that I ended up going with. I went with them because they had good contrast. I looked at them all in black and white. I thought they worked well. They were similar to the original patterns, um, contrasts. Although in Gudrun's pattern, it's more dark with a light contrast, mine's light with more dark contrast. So I've got to be careful that I actually choose the right color and don't go with the subliminal messages of the color coding in the diagram. Because I've done that before and knitted something completely back to front. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. It came out okay though. But anyway, so, and then wouldn't you know it, look at, it looks like woolly thistle colors purples and greens that was not intended but quite a nice um quite a nice thing unfortunately this color here fc12 is um unavailable to us right now due to covid they're not uh, making any more of this and this is what i have left very dangerous i am going to be playing yarn chicken right to to the end of this and i think i've got three more rows <laughs> i think we know the answer what am i going to do what am I going to do? So yeah, I do. Oh my gosh. So here we are. It's a top down. Let me find the front and the back. Of course, my needles are in it right in the middle. All right, so that's the back then. Uh, yeah, things are coming off the needles. I'm not gonna worry about it too much because it's Jameson and Smith and I won't lose my stitches. Right, so it's lovely. Gudrun Johnson is a great designer. You all know who she is, I'm quite sure. She is the Shetland trader. Um, and there's some lovely uh, short rows for uh, the neck shaping. But first of all, she has you use, is it the German cast on? I can't remember now, oh, I think it is. And it gives you a nice stretchy over the head 
and glasses <laughs> neckline. So I took the time to figure that one out. I am just a long tail cast on girl. I never really bother with fancy things like um, fancy cast ons, but actually um, then I do pull my glasses off down my nose over my, you know, as I'm trying to pull on a sweater and that's really annoying. So I decided I would take the time because Gudrun uh, said to <laughs> in our pattern. And so I did and I'm really happy and I will use this again and it holds its shape nicely as well. And then you get straight into the color work. I think that's going to be nice. This has been a totally fun knit. What I like about this particularly is probably that there's no floats. All the um, color work is very close together. So you don't have to, you know, fangle around with, um, with floats, which makes it quicker to knit. Of course, being me, I did screw things up. I started off, I did the neck shaping, but then I decided that this was the, um, where I changed colors on the front. I didn't realize I was on the front until, you know, I'd knitted quite a long ways in, like there. There's all my color changes. Um, but I decided that I wasn't gonna rip it all out. I think that I can probably get away with it. Um, but I was glad that I did realize that in fact, I'd screwed up when I did. And then I just changed where my end of row, uh, round is to the back, to the proper back there it is. What a mess. But there, I don't mind showing you my petticoat. Here's underneath. So if you don't know, the key to color work, stranded color work is tension and not being too tight with your floats. I'm calling them floats because they are floats, but you don't have to catch your floats with this pattern. That's what I was trying to say. And I don't think I said that. They all have floats. The float is the piece that floats along the back till it's knitted again. And you're always knitting with two colors and one of them is traveling the back like this. So um, what I like about this pattern is you don't have to catch your floats because you're not going across too many stitches before you're knitting it again. Um, all right, so this is my underneath. And what was I saying about that? I don't remember. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this as a project to knit, really, really nice. I'm getting a couple of rows in every night and that's the back end. And um, I'm almost finished. I think I've got about this much more to do of color work and then it's gonna be shoo. I'm knitting the ladies version. She does have two versions with the pattern. One's a unisex and one's actually written for um, the female form. That's the one I'm knitting. Although I'm undecided whether I'll do any uh, waist shaping. I, I quite like, actually I like A-line shaping because that just gives me um, some flexibility where I need it. Uh, right, so th that's what I'm knitting on right now. And of course, did I say this is Jameson and Smith, two ply, and we have loads and loads of it. That's all Jameson and Smith, that whole island back there. We are out of stock of the colors that they're out of stock of though, but they do seem to be getting more in. So they might be out of this this week, but next week they'll have it in. So we are trying to replenish our stocks and but there's no news on fc12 so i think i'm scuppered <laughs> i will not be stopped though i do have i could look for other colors that are the same tone and maybe you know just switch it out not another green i don't have another green like that but another um purple i'll show you what i end up doing anyway so that's what i'm knitting on right now so as I mentioned, we are in the throes of our sweater cal. This is our third annual sweater cal. We've got loads of designers participating. Thank you if you've shopped with them. And thank you to the designers for offering such great discounts um, for the cal. And we've had some great prizes. We had a cast on prize go to a winner um, on cast on day. We actually did a roll in cast on just to give everybody time to actually get in and, and cast on and get their yarn and all of that. Um, get all their ducks in a row. So we had a few days of what we called the cast on and then we picked a winner at random and that winner received or is receiving a whole kit uh, of one of Marie Wallen's designs um, in 
her yarn and everything. So that was a really wonderful cast on prize. So thanks to Marie Wallen for that. And we are, when you're watching this, we're up around our halfway mark and we have a halfway mark prize as well, donated by Helen Magnuson of Iceland. And she has a sock club going right now and her prize is all to do with that. So if you're interested in that and we haven't pulled for it yet, which I don't think we will have, definitely get in the running for that. You can find out more about it at the Woolly Thistles uh, Ravelry page and um, go in there and find out what the deets are. But if you're already knitting along and chatting away in there too, you'll probably know about it already anyway. We also have a Facebook group now, which is Growing Leaps and Bounds. So thanks if you're joining us over there. And um, our Facebook group, we're knitting along and um, we have Laurie in there who is a good friend um, from, from uh, where I live. I've known her for years and she is in there helping us uh, moderate and chit chat in there. So thank you very much, Laurie, for that. I do appreciate it. And yeah, we have a couple of moderators now in the Ravelry group, including uh, Bonnie and Cheryl. Um, Crafty Lane is Cheryl and Bonnie is Glass Bonnie. And thank you ladies for helping us in Ravelry too. Maggie and I are still popping in and checking in and um, chatting away. And the prize fairy has visited uh, the Ravelry group already and maybe has again since um, recording this and you seeing it. And there probably will be a prize fairy zooming over to um, the Facebook group too. And the prize fairy is really just looking to sprinkle some love and dust over um, the chatty Cathy's in the group. So we just want to encourage um, community and togetherness and um, cheerleading for each other, answering each other's questions. So if you if you can't figure something out, you know, throw that question up in the group, someone will answer you. And I love that. That is one of the best things about our groups is how helpful and chatty we are. So let's keep that going. And, you know, if you're a fast knitter, there's still time to join us. So do come by, go check us out on uh, Ravelry and you can see all the details there. It's a really fun cal. I'm enjoying knitting on mine and um, it's been a while that I can think of that I've had a sweater on the needles, although I'm pretty much a sweater knitter now, but I, ha I was knitting socks and, um, oh, and I just finished my other hap as well by Gudrun Johnson too, the Hansel hap, I showed you that last time. Love that, love it, love it so much. Yeah, so isn't it great to be a knitter? <laughs> I love being a knitter and I love all my knitted things. I do, I just, they bring me so much happiness and I'm sure yours do to you as well. So, all right, let's see, what else do we have going on here? Let's have a quick chat about the time of year it is. Uh, you're watching this sort of three quarters of the way through October, which means we are in fall. And in fact, as I record this, Rhinebeck should be happening. <laughs> yeah, um, I think there's a lot of Rhinebeck sales happening out there on um, the interwebs. So take advantage of those. I couldn't catch up to myself fast enough to organize anything. And by the time you see this, it'll be passed anyway, but very sad not to be at Rhinebeck this year and everything else but um so we're in fall we're in sweater weather the shop is just booming we we are really trying hard to keep up and um so we are thank you very much for shopping with us and for your enthusiasm for the yarns that we sell i feel very very happy and proud to be able to serve you in this way and that is my mission in life for sure this I found the perfect job it matches who I am with what I love to do with getting to know lots of customers and all as well as lead a women led team um, we are not just women here anymore we did employ our first um, young gentleman and he will be starting very soon his name's Paul and it's great that he is coming uh, into our <laughs> into our den but um, yes it's a very empowering uh, little shop we are very busy we are figuring out how to communicate with within ourselves as we grow um, and how, you know, inventory talks to customer service, talks to marketing and all of this. And it's so exciting, exciting to see our team 
growing and stretching and I just I just hope and I'm pretty sure we are doing okay I just hope that um, you know you are a happy customer and if you're not you just let us know but um, we receive so many emails from you lovely guys just you know happy with your purchase happy that we're here and um, it's very very rewarding so thank you so much for just been wonderful customers we love doing what we do we're a very happy band here and and we just want to keep doing it but we're in the we're in the busy season now the traditionally busy season and black friday will be upon us before you know it and actually it might even things might start a little earlier because we are worried uh about the postal service um, and i am looking into and have done some work with fedex and ups but we want to support um, the post office as much as we can, but we also want to make sure you get your packages. Um, so if you have any strong feelings about that, I did hear from some of you that, you know, you want me to support the postal service and I do support the postal service. Uh, we do very much and we will continue to, that will always be an option uh, here, but there might be through the holidays, um, another option if we can make that fly, just so that you can choose yourself who you want to support and where you want to put your money and you know getting it to you on time if that's really important and things like that so we're still looking into that we're working on it um but we love the postal service um they're wonderful uh, they've always been very good to us actually as i record this i think he just picked up our mail outside so on saturday mornings when i come in i leave all the bags to go out in the hall and he comes down and he must hear me talking to you guys <laughs> all the time. I think he's gone. I leave it, you know, we've got a big cart rolly thing and all the bags are on it. And then he rolls it out to his van and then he brings the cart back and he leaves us our bags and things. So that's good. Anyway, so yes, Black Friday is coming and uh, we are working towards what we're going to have on offer for you. So just, you know, Make sure you know that the Woolly Thistle will be participating and that you should be checking us out. And of course, as mentioned before, make sure you're on our email list so that you hear about things first uh, because there might be something that you really, really would love in there. So we're working on that. That's coming down the pike. It's sort of crazy and fun. And um, yeah, we just love what we're doing here. So thank you so much for loving it too and for supporting us with your purchases. Right, let's do a shop update and I'll give you a quick rundown of what's happening and what's coming in and what's going out. So Shetland Wool Week 2020, I think that's getting ready to ship to us. In fact, by the time you see this, it could be on its way. We're still expecting an end of October um, uh, release date. So I know they're printed though. So fingers crossed those are coming and if we can get them out to you sooner we will um, so there's still some available as pre-orders in the shop and if you want to be part of that first wave of getting them uh, getting a copy then um, go buy yourself a pre-order you pay full price right now but then you are guaranteed a copy of the Shetland Wool Week and I have ordered the past years as well they, they just haven't come in because I think they are working so hard um, on their 2020 issue, but we will have more of uh, 17, 18 and 19, as well as the new one, which is 2020. Um, it looks gorgeous. And I did get in um, the DK Jamesons of Shetland yarn to make yarn sets for Donna Smith's Peary Leaves, which you can see on the website. Um, it's uh, she, she designed it for Jamesons DK, as well as her own Lang Soon. Uh, line of yarn of course I can't get that there's not enough for her to wholesale it to me or anything like that um, so the patterns written for both and if you see photos of the dark green one in a pine uh, green color that's what I've got in that's what the patterns written for and it looks really really nice I might have to purloin some of that yarn for myself and what else um, more Shetland, Fair Isle Weekend by MJ Mucklestone. I've been so excited for this book because I feel my heart is in Fair Isle. Um, I need to get back there and take my husband this time. I keep threatening to take him over there one of these days and hopefully we will actually make that happen. My kids are like, <laughs> 
but I'll take my husband. So, um, so Feral, uh, Weekend by MJ Mucklestone, a gorgeous book published by Lina, and that is due in the beginning of November, and that, as far as I know, is still on target. So we have pre-orders for that too. We are pre-order city here. Then the third pre-order we have right now is Nordic Knits by Birger Berg, Birger Berg. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm really trying. And um, so that is coming in the beginning of November as well. And that is a hardback book by him. He is a Norwegian designer. You can see all his stuff on Instagram. And um, we're very excited for that book to be published uh, in English and be with us very soon. It's rolling right around. Um, Lina Magazine is coming back. And I thought that was just the best news. I'm just really excited about it. It's going to be their number 10 magazine. And um, I anticipate opening pre-orders for that very shortly too. So uh, watch our Instagram, watch out for our newsletter announcements. I will probably do a little coupon code for the first few people to um, order or pre-order their copy through the, uh, the email. So, you know, if you like things like that, it does, it does uh, do you good to be on there. And then, um, and I think it's gonna be beautiful. The photos I've seen on Instagram, um, it's a breath of fresh air. It's lovely, it's very diverse and the patterns look gorgeous and just, you know, it's got that line of something, that joie de vivre, whatever it is they have, this magazine has it again. And so I'm sure it's gonna be a huge hit. Um, Exmoor Sock Yarn. I wanted to show you some, but we don't have any because uh, it all moved out. Um, but we do have more coming and it'll be much closer to coming when you see this. Um, it'll have been in the works, the whole process of getting it over here. And we will be able to put it in the shop pretty much as soon as we get it. So that's coming. And thank you so much for um, your orders of the last lot that we did. It is such a great yarn. I actually have... I just wanted to show you my before and after socks, I think these were called, by Hay Brown Berry, her design. And I knitted this, uh, these in um, our line of cow. Oh my gosh. It's a catalog of mistakes and dropped stitches. I'll need to catch that. These have been through the wash and everything though, and that's not bad at all. So what? Um, this is Bibblebug in Exmoor Sock Yarn uh, in Hay Brown Berry. And I wanted to show you um, how they're doing because I've worn these and washed these. Um, they have 10% nylon in them. This is not a reinforced heel. It's a, what do you call that? Is it a short row heel or a, I don't actually know the right terminology for that. Anyway, it, there's no reinforcement there except for the 10% nylon that's in the yarn itself. And I've worn these and washed these and look at how they're wearing. I mean, brand new, brand new. My hair gets everywhere. Oh, this one's knitted in. That happens all the time too. So you can see that's the part that I'm hitting my heel with and in perfect condition. And I'll show you the other one too. I love this bibble bug for, uh, what's it called? It reminds me of Chuku. 128 or H28 has this sort of color and also West Yorkshire Spinners which is another great sock yarn has um, their not money penny is it money penny no penny I don't know it's this color and it's got penny in the name I can't remember things anymore but look at I mean these have been worn in boots and this yarn has been thrown in the washing machine with my other delicates and then I pull them out before everything else goes in the dryer and these just hang over the, um, you know, the clothes horse to dry because I can't find my sock blockers and honestly, I don't bother with that. Although it is nice when you finish a pair for the first time and you block them, that's lovely. But I just wanted to show you how my Exmoor sock yarn um, socks are holding up. And the answer is they're holding up very, very well, which is very good. So you should feel confident with your sock yarn purchase with the Exmoor sock. Um, they're going to do you great. And the colors are so amazing, as is the label. I love the label. And whenever I see a really gorgeous label, my mind always goes to journaling. 
And I wonder, should we try and find a journal um, for, for the woolly thistle uh, to have in the store? Um, would it have to be knitting specific or do you just want something pretty? Could you answer that question? Um, and that will be your entry for the prize this time. Because um, I generally, and I need to dig them out and show you, I haven't had time to do it for the last couple of years, but I have collected things along the way, like nice labels or little sketches of things or um, little swatches or little bits of yarn. And it's just like, it's just a book and it's actually just a composition book that I've used in the past, but then it gets so kind of stuffed, you can't shut it. And that's my favorite favorite stage of something. But there's also journals out there that, um, you know, are more daily planners or knitting planners. And if there's anything, um, if there's a particular brand that you like, um, then let me know in the comments uh, if that's something that you'd like the Willy Thistle to sell because there's probably still time to get them in ready for you to start a new year. So that's a good good uh, timing thing as well. So I'd love to hear from you on that because I don't have anything planned as it is right now. Okay, so Exmoor Sock Yarn, I talked about that. The tops, the tops, everybody's been so excited. We probably don't have any in stock by the time you see this, but um, we'll get more. I'll show you first. Um, I got two natural shades. So this, this is our 100 gram bag of fluff. Now this of course is from John Arbin. He is the king of tops. So you spinners out there will know what I'm talking about. And this is BFL that has been twice sorted. So very, very nice. This sold out in minutes. And then I went um, Jacob. So this is the lovely brown, no luster at all on it. Um, I don't want to open these because they've been so prettily packed and worked on. And I don't want to, um, you know, do anything with, with the fiber. Um, 100 gram bags though. So this is Jacob. And then I had four autumnal colors come in from Devonia, which we also stock the yarn in four ply. But this here is pollen gold. So that's what it looks like before it's spun up and you can see all the different colors sorted in there. And this one here is the ivy leaf color. These just feel so luxurious and cloudy amber amber blaze is it amber something my best friend's name is amber that's why i remember that but i think it's amber blaze gorgeous and i just love all the different colors in there maggie made all these bags for you she said it was the best best um job i've ever given her <laughs> and this here is uh sage sprig or sprig sage sage sprig oh just swirly goodness so we should get more of these in let us know if you would like to have your own of these colors you can do that by clicking on the notify me um button on the product page but i'll see about expanding our color choice too Shipping this over is kind of interesting because, you know, it comes, it's like a big cloud coming over in a box. Um, it's not as condensed as yarn, so um, there's quite a bit of shipping involved, but that's fine. Happy to do it. I want to show you, I don't know if we'll have any of these left in the shop by the time you see this, but we did uh, just get our spin drift update and uh, the Barra Cowl is, uh, there's still a few available at the time of recording. And this is your Barra Cowl kit here. And you get a lovely uh, wee Katrinkle stitch marker with a woolly thistle on it. And you get all the colors you need. Um, and of course this uh, Barra Cowl kit is found in Marie Wallen's book, Shetland. And um, on Monday, which will be last Monday by the time you see this, uh, we will have had the Bressa and the Yell um, and the seaweed as well in the shop and they'll probably be gone uh, but again um, that went out to uh, people on the email list 
Now, um, brand new is the Vementry, and I can put a picture of that up here. That is some more, uh, spin, uh, not Spindrift, but Jameson's of Shetland in their DK white. And it's a vest design that um, is a really great first color work and sticking project. So if you're interested in learning how to do it, you will end up with an all over color work garment. You didn't have to bother with sleeves and you didn't have to bother putting sleeves in and you basically steek for the neck and then you steek for the armholes, pick those up and just do your ribbing, very easy. And a great, um, a great way to be exposed to steeking in the first place as well as color work. And all the colors are chosen for you, they all come in a kit. And it's a design by Mary Jane Mucklestone and um, just fabulous, really feminine too. Lovely colors, bright and cheery, but also with gray, which just helps tone things down. So it's a lovely balance. So those are in the shop too. We are out of Silent Night, but we have more coming from West Yorkshire Spinners. And this is uh, this year's holiday uh, Christmas yarn, and it's got sparkle in it, and it's been selling like hotcakes. But also this year, they reissued uh, previous years. So this is Fairy Lights, which is just so fun. And they put sparkle in it too. Can you see? I'm not sure. So there's that. Holly Berry has been the surprise best selling out of the previous years. So more of those are coming. And of course, Candy Cane is really fun. This is a stripe. And uh, West Yorkshire Spinners, all of these are signature four ply, um, which all have 25% uh, nylon and 75% wool, 35% of which is BFL. So they're nice and soft, very hardy, Wears like iron, seriously, you know. Um, if you want to knit your husband's socks or your kid's socks or even yourself, there's lots of different designs and colors that this comes in, 100 gram ball. And this is Robin, this is last year's color. And that's available too. So all that I just showed you is available, but we might be out of stock when you see this, but they are coming back in stock. And the best way to know when they get here is, I always say it, click on the notify me button on the product page and then you put your email in there and then we email you as soon as it goes in the shop and then you get to make your purchase. We recently restocked with all our uh, nail polish. So we have the flagship, the reds, the pinks and now the greeny blues. And for the holidays, let me introduce the next three colors. I'm gonna take them out of here because that is very shiny and I will share with you what they're called as well. So you know, uh, we have tailor-made polish, make us our own polish, which is very fun and exciting. And this year we have used Silent Night as our inspiration for Knit All Night. So this one is called Knit All Night and it matches the blues really nicely in there. So your three pack comes with that. And then there is um, Flash Your Stash, which uh, is a lovely sort of bronze color with glitter. So party, party. And then Enabler is this lovely kind of gold color. So all together, this is our holiday collection and they should be in the shop when you see this. These are great for stocking stuffers, great for treating yourself, and just happy and festive and, you know, brighten up your nails. Because we look at our nails when we're knitting, we look at our hands all the time, so why not make them pretty? And, you know, I think you guys like it because they're doing really well. Um, we keep having to replace or replenish our stocks, which is really great, I love it. Um, Taylor made Nail Polish is another woman-owned business. They're out of Pennsylvania, I think Philadelphia, can't remember. Easton, Pennsylvania, I'm not sure where that is. And um, so she is a friend though, and uh, her business is a wonderful business. And she actually just, and you might be interested in this for the holidays, um, she recently just started selling uh, Make Your Own Nail Polish Kits that come in a box and I'll put a picture there. And so these would be great for um, girls get togethers. Even if you're doing it via Zoom, you could all get a box and you can make your own nail polish and then 
you know, show each other on Zoom. Um, it's great for stocking stuffers for your little ones because uh, these are all safe. They're vegan and, um, you know, no one can get into too much trouble making their own polish with this. And also it's just a really nice science experiment too that's relevant to those of us who like night's nails. And I'm going to go home and put on that blue today and see what I think of that. Or maybe the gold because I'm feeling flashy and shiny. Um, so I thought that was really fun and very festive. So thank you, Vanessa, who makes these and lets us sell them. Just wonderful. All right, uh, what else do I want to tell you about? We are able to keep replenishing the Rama Fennel Garn fairly quickly for you. So if it is out of stock, again, click the Notify Me link and we will make sure we get that back in. Um, the Fennel Garn is selling really well. We're knitting with it a lot right now, which is really, really wonderful. It's one of my favorite yarns um, and it gets better and better with washes and wear too. Um, let Lopi is in great shape too, uh, except for the greys. We're, we're, trying to, we're trying to get ahead of that so we don't run out for a long time. That did happen last year. So um, get your Lopi early, I would say. And if you want to knit this, it's a free pattern. So that's a good deal. And what else? Tuku was just replenished as well. So we should have everything in stock there, both in fingering and sock. But again, you can let us know that you're waiting for it and we will make sure we get that in. This might excite some of you that we are planning to sell off our singles of Spindrift so that you can get exactly the top up colors you want or a whole array of colors if that's what you want, but you get to pick and choose. We don't usually do that, but we will be offering that as a special uh, right around the corner. Again, be on our newsletter to get news of that. And um, don't forget we have the DK for the Vimentry and the Peary Leaves, that's Donna Smith's design. Uh, Vimentry is by MJ Mucklestone and Peary Leaves is in the 2020 uh, Shetland Wool Week. Don't forget either that we have a wish list on the shop. And whenever you go to the shop, you'll see on the left hand side, or is it this way? I don't know which is my left here. Um, anyway, on the left hand side, you'll see there's a little tab that says wish list. And you can click on that and create your own wish list. And you can then send that wish list to hubby, you know, your significant other, your kids, your parents, whoever is going to get you exactly what you want this year. <laughs> If it involves the woolly thistle, you can use a wish list to do that, which is a really nice thing. One thing I will note though, and I cannot seem to find one that does this any better. Um, unfortunately, it only lets you save one ball of something. So it's not going to let you put a sweater quantity or it's not going to let you change uh, one ball of something to nine balls of something. So you would probably have to put the nine balls in separately if that's what you need and that's what um, your wish list recipient needs to know. The other good use for the wish list though is for yourself and then you just sort of keep stuff in there um, so that when you come back you know what you were wanting to get. It's just a nice thing and it just sits on the shop. You don't need to have a shop account to have it and uh, even email it which is a nice feature so it's just yours. It's there. Happy to have it there for you and I hope you use it for the holiday season because um, yeah, studies show that husbands do respond. Husbands and significant others and wives and everybody uh, will respond to a wish list because they do want to get you what you want. And uh, there's lots of lovely things to want here. So yeah, I think that's all my news for you right now. We're continuing on with uh, $99 free shipping, a flat rate of $9 otherwise. And it's pretty easy to get up to that free shipping threshold and it's worth it. Um, shipping is very expensive, period. It costs us a lot of money and um, you know, you pay for shipping unless you're able to get up to the $99 threshold. And I think that's fairly um, standard. Uh, if we could afford to give you free shipping on everything or a lesser amount, we certainly would. Where This is where we're at. Um, so $99 is where we can afford to offer you free shipping at this point. We're always looking at things though. Um, I think that's all I have for you this time. One last thing, uh, we did get John Arbin's annual, the second edition, and this has lovely, fun, <laughs> fun photos. It's got pictures of all the tops as well. There's patterns in here and meet the shepherds. Oh, 
yeah really nice shawls there's crochet as well as knitting <laughs> there's Sonia and this is Juliet she is John's wife yeah lovely projects Katie Greenbean again has illustrated I recognize her hand yeah, there's a crossword in there that she's illustrated and put together lovely end pages so we do have that we do have a lot of the line of magazines in um, except for issue five which is out of print but we have continued to stock Lina because I know there's a lot of you out there who are missing an odd issue or wants to get back on the bandwagon with it so that's fun we need to get more Kate Davies in uh, we're running low of that when our pre-orders come in for um, Shetland Wool Week Feral Weekend and Nordic Knits. This place will be Bedlam, but we will do everything we can to get your orders out as quickly as we can. We always do that. Um, that's one of our things that we pride ourselves on. We are organized and ready. You could, you, I could show you, but um, I'm not going to because we're all set up here, but um, we have boxes and boxes and boxes of orders that are pre-packed with all the other things you want with your book. And so your order is sitting waiting to go we just need to wrap up the book and put it in your parcel close it ship it out so we are ready to go with that and we're very excited for it because there's loads of other things coming down the pike at us so we are moving on moving on um yeah i think that's all i have for you this time um take good care the winter is coming as my husband keeps saying so it's going to get colder so get clacking with your needles start wearing your woolies uh, with pride of course and if you go out wear a mask and take your knitting so i was just getting ready to uh, take a picture for the podcast um, and i realized that i haven't talked about the shetland journal um, this book is absolutely gorgeous and we will have more of these come back in stock. It's more than a knitting magazine. However, there are beautiful knitting patterns in here, but there's also recipes, art, um, jewelry, walks. It's really all about Shetland. And by the way, it smells pretty good. <laughs> I don't know what that is, just that book smell. So we will have more uh, Shetland journals in. Of course, who's going to hear about it first? That's right, those on the newsletter. So be on the newsletter to hear about things like this. We did have some come in and they went out um, to newsletter subscribers. 